recently got a comment suggesting that I do a video going over my study habits and how I prepare for exams and things like that. And at first, I, I didn't think I could do anything with that topic. I didn't think I'd be able to say something that people don't already know. But then I realized that a lot of people that watch my videos are high school students that are about to go to college. Some are also people that were in my position where I started out in a different major and the different studying habits was a bit of a culture shock. So this video is more catered towards those types of people that watch the video. So if you're someone who has well-established study habits, you're doing really well, this is just not for you, right? This is gonna waste your time, essentially. Unless you just like watching the videos. In which case, let's get started. I've always loved the analogy of comparing work to gas occupying the space in a container. If you have some gas in a container, what it does is it evenly distributes itself throughout the volume. If you increase the size of the container, the gas is still gonna be evenly distributed, but there's going to be less gas per unit volume because it'll be dissipated over a larger distance. Decrease the size of the container, the opposite happens, and you also get the gas to feel more pressure. Now, comparing this to work, obviously the total amount of work on a given project doesn't change. The thing that does change is the amount of time per day that you have to allot towards that project. Decrease the amount of time that you're giving yourself and you have to be more resourceful or more efficient with your time. And the problem that some people make is they try to apply this thought process to studying as well. So you'll have these people that are doing all-nighters trying to cram a month or two's worth of information into one night and then being surprised that they're not doing too well. And as simple as that sounds, for some reason that took me a while to internalize. I was the king of all-nighters when I was at VCU. Now my study habits are a lot different and I'm just fundamentally less stressed when I have to study now. So let's go through an example of how I studied for my last exam, which was my Quantum 2 Midterm 1. Also in this example, let's give ourselves a week's time to study. That's kind of on the lower bound of how long a professor will uh, announce or set the exam time. But that means that if your professor gives you any longer, then it should be even easier. So the first day when I started studying for this exam is I looked at what the exam was actually on and I compared that to what sections in the book that corresponded to and what sections in my professor's lecture notes that corresponded to. Now my exam was on addition of angular momentum and spin and time independent perturbation theory. So what I did first is I took a little notebook and I started writing down the pages associated with the book that I'm using and the pages of my professor's lecture notes that correspond to what the examinable material is. So what I'm doing is I'm minimizing the studying that I need to do per day subject to the constraint that is the number of pages that I still need to cover. So this is almost like the Lagrange multiplier of studying. So if we look at the Griffiths Quantum book, we see that uh, addition of angular momentum or angular momentum in general starts on page 160 and ends on page 200 because we're also doing spin. Then we come around and we take a look at time independent perturbation theory and we notice that, well, degenerate starts at page 257 and we're not getting examined on that. So we're going to go from 249 to 246 and I'm going to write down these pages. Now my professor tends to lecture at a level higher than Griffith's, so what I usually do is I tend to read Griffith's first, that way I can get a broad understanding of the subject, and then afterwards I'll tackle my professor's lecture notes. And as you can see here, these are the pages of Griffith's that I should go over before starting to review my professor's lecture notes. Now I'm a very big note taker, so let's take a look at the notes that I took on these sections as well. As you can see, I try to keep my handwriting neat as possible and I like to keep note of where I'm finding the material. I try my best to leave a good amount of white space, but if I like to keep some topics all on the same page, sometimes that goes away. One thing that I always try to do when studying is do what I call the hidden exercises. And what I mean is this. You'll see something leading up to a derivation of, say, something like spin, and then you'll come across something that says, from which it follows that and then we get an expression for spin in the z direction. And that's what I mean by hidden exercises. They'll show you how to do it for one thing, and then they'll say that it's a similar logic to finding out the next. So what I like to do is I like to make sure that for, for one of the next cases that I can do it by myself. And honestly, more often than not, I'll come across a point in that next derivation where I'll say, oh, okay, that's why they did that. And what this does is it keeps you from just trying to memorize steps. It makes you actively participate in your own studying. Now one thing that I like to make a point of when studying is not actually trying to solve problems or examples until I've gone through the actual derivations of the equations that I'd be using in the first place. Sometimes it is good to see those equations at work first though, it all depends on the class. 
So at the end of the day, just be honest with yourself and see if you're really up for solving that now or if you need to uh, review the thought process a little bit more first. Now, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. The first thing that I should always start with is assessing how much I need to do total. So before getting into all of that studying out of, say, Griffiths, if you're studying for quantum or doing like the exercises, get a running number of how much you have to study first. So after accounting for the number of pages that are relevant in my professor's lecture notes, what I come out to is that the total number of pages I need to study before the exam is 87 pages. So that comes out to about 14 and a half pages per day. And that's assuming that I don't want to have to study the day of the exam. What's great about this is if I were to have underestimated how much I needed to study, like say I only gave myself two days, well that would be something along the lines of 42 or 43 uh, pages per day. 42, 43 pages per day is doable, but there's no time to have questions about any of it. The only time I would be able to study that much in one day is if I already had a really, really good grasp of the material. And even so, I, I still wouldn't bet on that. So the next step would be for me to go over the Griffiths section, which is the easier section, because he tends to motivate the need for the equations and give a more conceptual background, which helps me understand the material better. So I would go through that, I would take my notes, and I would go through some of the exercises in Griffiths. And that's another thing to keep in mind, because though I only have to read 87 pages total, that doesn't take into account the time that it takes to do problems. One more comment about uh, the number of pages I'll do a day is normally I'll, I'll tweak it a little bit and try to finish certain sections a day that are sort of like milestones within the scope of those pages. So if I do like the 14 or 15 pages and it's only a few away from the next section, I might finish it off. What I like about this is that I'm not saying I'm going to study two or three hours every day. Instead of picking an arbitrary amount of time that may or may not get you to the finish line, this still is guaranteed to get you there. So when I actually start to sit down and study, I like to eliminate as many distractions as possible. One thing about me is that I hate studying in groups. I might study with one other person, but never more than that. Some people like to take breaks in between their studying. I don't really like doing that. At the very most, what I'll do is I'll take a break and I'll try to explain what I've learned so far. More specifically, since I'm getting into the more abstract math associated with physics, what I'll do is I'll try to make sure I can still tether it to reality. I'll try to say, that's what this stands for physically. For example, in physics terms, I could say that if two operators commute with each other, that means I have the right to search for an eigenstate that satisfies both operators, such that when I act on the eigenstate with both operators, I spit out their respective eigenvalues. Now that means nothing to anybody outside of physics, but I can try to translate that into actual real people terms and say, well what that means is I have the right to try to prepare a system in such a way that I can make two measurements simultaneously on that system that correspond to some abstract operators. So an example of that would be angular momentum and spin at the same time. Now my situation is a little bit different because if you've watched some of my other videos, what I tend to do is force you guys to listen to me try to explain these things. So I love to ask myself questions to see that I understand what I've read so far, and I love to bother the hell out of my professor when I don't understand things. And I don't really feel bad about bothering them via email about this stuff because I always ask them questions well before the exam. And typically your professors want nothing more than to help you, so that's what they're there for. Now you might have noticed that throughout this whole video I haven't talked about the homework once. Reworking homework is something I save for the very end of my studies. At least in my case, my homework is almost always in the words of my professor, so I treat it as if each homework assignment is an exam in itself. Can I do it without looking at any other reference material? So essentially, after I've done all of the reading and I've done all of the exercises, I get to a point to where I feel that I'm ready for an exam. So when I feel that I'm ready for an exam, I start to rework the homework, and that helps tailor that down into doing your professor's exam. Because again, it's going to be in your professor's words, you know what he or she likes to ask and thinks is important, and that's where the homeworks come in. After I finish all of that, I think that I'm in a pretty good spot to take the exam. Now, assuming that you start early enough in advance, what's cool about this is that you get to go to your professor each class before the exam, and you get to say something like, hey, with this section, I've been studying such and such and such. 
Is there anything that I'm missing? It's a free way of, of asking your professors. There's something that's going to be on the exam that I didn't study in that section. And more often than not, they'll say, hey, uh, you are missing this. Or, um, or they might even say something along the lines of, actually, you're studying that, but I don't really think that's too important. Now, because this video has sort of been a little all over the place, I'd like to summarize some of the key things that I find important when I'm studying. Number one, find the average time that you need to spend studying so that you can at least hit everything before the exam. Then I like to stretch and squeeze that parameter to fit certain milestones within the chapters of the book. Not all of the examples and exercises in the book are going to be relevant to your exam. That's why because you're starting early, you're able to filter some of that out by asking your professor if the things you're studying are relevant. Also, don't be afraid to talk to yourself. Explain what you're doing physically. Make sure you understand that this is more than just math. So if you're someone who procrastinates or gets distracted easy, don't try to change who you are right before the exam. You should work around it and plan for it. And then once you've gone through some exercises and you feel like you have an understanding on how everything connects, then you're ready to rework the homeworks. Now, if you're a freshman in physics, unfortunately, your homework is probably mastering physics, which is not in the words of your professor. But also at that level, your professors tend to give practice exams. So I would suggest, honestly, reworking those instead. And also doing the homework, but really just looking at what has actually come out of your professor's mouth. I don't suspect I've said anything groundbreaking in this video, but this is how I study, and this is how I get straight A's in my physics classes. I just, you be honest with yourself, and you budget your time in a way that is reasonable, and is within the scope of certain deadlines. Now, if you do something different to study that you think is working for you, or you do what I said and it works for you, let me know in the comments section, and I'll see you guys there.